Welcome everyone, uh, Dr. Thor here, and get ready for Gnosis. Well, we're going to talk about Major Edward Dames. Ed Dames, who has uh, been a public figure and one of the major people who pushed out there about remote viewing, um, and has produced uh, courses and taught courses um, for many, many years, and has become quite wealthy for it. He lives in a mansion on the island of Maui in Hawaii. And I think this is important to note. I mean, not only is he a officer on a military pension, uh, but again, with all these connected remote viewers, they're all bought off to go out there to make a huge living teaching something that they learned in the military. Now, this is common with military contractors who then take their skills of military and bring those out to, uh, to become mercenaries and other things. This is common, and of course, it's always a jumping point to get the education in the military for whatever and then go into the private sector. I mean, this is how a lot of military works. Um, if you're a um, high up ranking military officer, after a period of time in the military, you get a very cushy job with a military contractor and use your influence to get them contracts and other things. So uh, they basically pay you off so that you come in there with a big time job making lots of money. So people need to understand that military is not a bunch of poor little hillbillies. Well, certainly the enlisted men are. But when you get past that, it's another corrupt cyst that needs to be eradicated with these corruption and horrible ways that the military works in general to steal a lot of money from you and me and build their malls, their golf courses, and all the other things that the military, who live high on the hog, producing no results whatsoever. But let's get back to remote viewing. Now, General Stubblebind, who apparently is someone who was an honest military man, uh, who got into it for higher reasons, and then kind of woke up before his last days, that, gee, he spent his life working for a horribly corrupt industry. <laughs> Which was quite a uh, revelation for him, and the fact is, is that, uh, was that he had the courage to basically admit that. Of course, he was medically murdered, as is a common way to get rid of people. Um, as we understand all these things, he stated that uh, Major Ed Dames was a guy who should have been shut up, that he was out there talking about things that he shouldn't be um, in this whole remote viewing area. But Ed Dames was picked deliberately because he was kind of a goofball. And how do you get something out there, get people involved in it, but at the same time, don't give it credibility? Well, you uh, appoint someone who's goofy. And, you know, this is a very interesting way of doing disinformation. Uh, and it shows you uh, not only the people involved behind this very skilled, but how goofy the human public is. So you march somebody out there, and, of course, he's wearing a uniform. You know, I'll never forget, and I think it's important to note, that in the... Um, wrestling federation uh they had a guy called sergeant slaughter now slaughter is not a nice term generally slaughter is not positive so um so he was a bad military guy dressed in a military uniform but what happens is he built a huge fan base because he was wearing a uniform and they eventually had to make him into a good guy <laughs> It's, it's really amusing how this turns around, how people actually get behind bad guys for one image or another. The same thing happened with uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper, who was a bad guy. Yet everybody liked him so much that they had to make him into a good guy. He just had a personality everybody liked. Isn't that interesting? The bad guys are the good guys, the good guys are the bad guys because they're boring uh, or whatever. It's very interesting. So what they do in the disinformation thing is they'll actually put people out there that um, uh, to teach something with the uniform on, quote, and then they're goofy as hell so they can discredit them. So, oh yeah, they talk about it, they talk about remote viewing, they open up this interest, and as was done with uh, Ed Dames, uh, and then he comes out with the most garbagey, frightening things you could ever think of. What's frightening is this guy was a military officer, and if you were under his command or he was in charge of things, wow, wow.
guy's got a very bizarre way of looking. He's very typical uh, goofball military. Um, it's amazing how the military allows such strange, weird people. You'd think that wouldn't happen in such a rigid organization, but it's loaded with Satanists. They, they took a guy, a colonel, made him a colonel just before general, uh, the head of the Temple of Sat. Unbelievable. And even with many allegations, they hesitated to get rid of him gave him clearances of almost the highest degree being the head of the Temple of Sat. Well, we have to really wonder what's going on there. Well, I don't wonder. <laughs> you think the military is some um, conservative? No, they're, they're obviously a bunch of demon-possessed fools. And we can certainly see that by their military record. What war has been won? <laughs> I don't know if a single war the Americans have won. It's all nonsense. So the point is, is that all of these things um, need to be looked at. So they put out this goo, and man, this guy is goofy and has been from day one. Now, Jim Mars, in his book, uh, Psychic Spies, talks about um, Danes and Morehouse and several other people. A very good book to read if you want to get into the details of what they did. Apparently, Ed Danes, of course... Um, like most clony type military people, if you do want to get ahead, you have to be um, brainwashed and have those skills and abilities, meaning you have to pass tests. And apparently he was able to pass tests, I think, if, Mar if I remember Mars correct, so don't hold me to this, but he went and learned Chinese and other things. So the point is it shows that uh, he does have a certain mental capacity. Does that mean intelligence? No. That means he has an intellect to learn what that... So he's able to pass tests, and of course this was what the military loves, because they've always been said to be stooges, so they, they like these guys that can pass tests. That's the same thing that happened with Michael, Colonel Michael Aquino, the head of the Satanist uh, Temple of Set, is that he was a very good student, and he wrote lots of stuff, and he, all the stuff the military likes because they tend to be stooges, guys that can write well and uh, pass tests. And he did, he qualified himself in several areas including, apparently, you know, uh, in the Special Forces, he passed that program. So, um, getting back to Ed Dames, uh, Ed Dames um, is a major, he's retired now, in the U.S. Army. So, uh, it's a pretty, fairly high-ranking. Uh, so he got into this particular program. You have to wonder, if he got into this program, it's because they were probably trying to get rid of him because he was goofy or nobody liked him. Yeah, go, why don't you go over there, Eddie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leave me alone, kid. So the whole idea is that um, this is most likely um, part of the situation because generally this kind of stuff is frowned upon. Um, so the whole idea is that... Um, he started all these things and started to, to be the first one to come out and starting to give classes. So he was the jump start out there. He pushed out by other people in the intelligence community to get him going because he was so bizarre. And they knew that he would come out, start programs, because like any military person, he had some organizational skills. And I'm sure he was backed by money and everything else from the uh, intelligence agencies. So he was a good guy to start it out there because he wasn't... A, his irrational thoughts and his grandstanding is going to get you publicity. And that's exactly what happened, thanks to Artie Bell. Art Bell, of course, was started. His whole show was funded by the intelligence agencies to begin with. Uh, the Bigelow T millionaire connected with the intelligence agencies funded Art Bell to get him going. And his show took off with the help of the intelligence community, which pushed things into popularity, as they do with uh, books and everything else. Terrence McKenna's book was popular because he was part of the intelligence community, and they get the book sold. They'll get it to big publishers, they'll get it in the bookstores. And if you do all the right things, you're almost guaranteed to have sales. The same thing with Art Bell. But that was the time when everybody was into these things. Things were very big back then, and there was uh, a limited amount of media that covered that. I mean, you know, now we, the Internet uh, is out there, and everybody can find everything easily. But you couldn't do that back when Art Bell was his most popular. He was the place to go to hear all these people. 
And uh, so it was a huge show where he was reaching millions of people every night. I believe 5 to 10 million people, which is now down to like half a million under the new goofball. So the whole idea is that um, this is a... Um, to understand that was the place. Uh, I don't think too many people are listening to radio anymore, uh, but there is a certain built-in audience for radio because of the fact there's millions and millions of people working at night uh, that listen to the radio. So there's an audience there. Um, because you can't watch TV, you're on the job, uh, you're, you're not looking at your computer. So the whole idea is how much other stuff is there. But radio is being hurt significantly by Internet access now. But he was basically brought into the STAR program and groomed as a teacher. He was supposed to be a monitor. He didn't, uh, per gossip, uh, he wasn't trained very much past a certain level because he was not meant to be a direct remote viewer. And there's difference between a monitor, someone who guides you during remote viewing. Russell Targ was one of these. He's not really a remote viewer but he guides people. That, and this seems to be a very important area of remote viewing, that someone who's working with you kind of guides you properly, tells you, uh, well, don't think about that. Think about this. Oh, you're wandering. Be centered here. So the whole idea is that uh, monitors are very important in the process and can really uh, retarget you to get much better information. And that's what he was. He wasn't really trained any further in remote viewing. Um, he was trained to be a monitor, trained to be a teacher, so, which I guess is good for his students, which he went out and made a fortune. I mean, he was booked up and may still be booked up, for all I know, for years and years ahead of time to get training from him because he was the first big shot. And, of course, he calls himself Major. You know, he's a military guy. Yeah, well, yeah, he knows something. <laughs> what, how to lose a war? So the whole idea is that um, this is the kind of silliness that people give uniforms and titles to organizations and people that have no credibility whatsoever. And that's one of the problems with the world. To think that the police are any good when they've had hundreds of years to handle crime and they can't, or I should say won't, and they are the criminals. Well, the only thing you can verify about the police department, as well as the military, is that they don't do their job. So, nobody around the world is scared to start a war because the U.S. military is going to show up. <laughs> uh, everybody knows that that's a joke. So, the whole idea is that um, when it comes to all these things, everybody needs to understand this, and they need to understand where people are coming from. So, so Major Ed Dames here uh, went out there and made a fortune, millions and millions of dollars on the support of his intelligent community and going out there um, with the pseudo credibility of that he was military trained. So we all have we have to keep all of this in mind of where he's coming from. And as I said, Stubblebine wanted him shut up, but Stubblebine was out of the loop. Uh, they knew he was an honest man, and they didn't tell him what the plan was. So first it was Dames, and it was a whole bunch of other people that came after that. Even a guy who teaches you remote viewing for free is ex-military. Aren't they all ex-military? Um, is that another word for ex-brain or stay away from it? So... Um, he then went out, of course, and started a company called SciTech to offer remote viewing services. Now, this is very interesting because all of these companies that start off that then seem to disappear. Why? Why aren't they making lots and lots of money instead of trying to get that thousand or two out of the individual touring the country, teaching them? Well, why not, why not directly go and make lots of money with your skills with big companies or for yourself? You know, I've always had this problem. It's the same a problem with uh, manifesting scientists and uh, people that claim to have uh, abilities in the occult sciences, etc. Well, why aren't you applying this in your life? And why are you making peanuts offering your services to others. Why don't you empower yourself? Well, there is a problem here because you don't have the same contacts that other people do. So how are you going to sell $10 million worth of products or uh, if you don't have products to sell? So there's a disconnect there. And this is always a problem with people who do have power that how do you apply it? But it is something that you really have to grab yourself by and do it. And this is something that uh, Success Tech is starting to do right now. And it's a little more complicated than people think. But the bottom line is, is that um, these people don't have the same problems with having survival funds. Uh, they have, uh, they're living on government 
pensions and they have lots of money coming in so the point is they should be able to take time out and make real money but apparently this is not um, something that they can handle and apparently there's lots of money that they made with other companies and we don't know what they've done etc you generally don't talk about that he also, uh, to get his message out and to make more money, teamed up with a, a guy named Harry Delighter, whose company's Light Productions produced all sorts of videos uh, for sale to the public. So he didn't hire. He went into business with somebody else that could then take his teachings, because he had no technical abilities to do this, to get his videos done, which he has been selling uh, huge amounts of for many years now. But... As the uh, so this was part of the reality of what was going on with so we what can we say to all this so it's the same old story first of all you're dealing with immoral people uh, the military and it's not just US military they're all immoral they're murderers their job is to kill people and they really have no moral compass it's it's a, a delusional world to live in. They wave whoever's country's flag there, and you kill for that country because you're the good guys. So this is, you know, and it's convenient because you just write it off. But, of course, you know, any professional soldiers that I've ever met are not living in that delusion. They're basically psychopathic people who love to kill, and they don't care who they kill or for what reason. They're not going to go into battle saying, is this justified? No, I'm here to kill. So that's what it is, and it's you're foolish if you think anything else. So, um, Dames apparently was a relatively um, uh, typical, able to be trained type clone person going through a system. He gained a certain rank. He was a fairly competent officer, uh, but the fact that he ended up in the Stargate program shows that. Uh, <laughs> they didn't think too much of nobody in the Stargate program were officers of or, or or people in general of high regard. It was a, something to get rid of somebody who either had no use or um, wanted a cushy job to do nothing. So these are uh, must be understood. So the whole idea is after he got out of the military and shot his mouth and was making a fortune and all this, he got into different companies and so forth. But he made a fortune. So I guess maybe he figured uh, he he. Uh, uh, he got while the getting was good, meaning he didn't keep these companies running, even though he seemed to have gone through several companies. Um, apparently, D. Leiter uh, sued Ed Dames uh, and SciTech after Dames reportedly cut him out of all sorts of products, profits. So, well, uh, this gets back to the credibility uh, of trusting a military man who doesn't really have any concerns. I'll kill anybody they put in front of me. Uh, that's that's your fellow American. <laughs> Shoot him twice. <laughs> Who cares? I'm military. That's how they think. And if you're of anything else, you're a stooge. Understand what's happening in the world, really. So things can change. Um, so what's interesting is that uh, he did sue uh, Dames and was forced to cough up $435,000 after a breach of contact judgment. Um was given to SciTech. So they took him to court, he lost, and the judge awarded uh, Delighter $435,000. Now that's a lot of money, which means a lot of money here, millions, or at least um, uh, at least hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, were made by Ed Dames. If he came up with, and I'm assuming he paid this, because if you don't, you run into further problems and your assets are then in danger, he came up with four, half a million dollars almost, he came up with. Meaning that this, I'm sure that he probably sued Dames for several million, and generally judgments are always lesser than what you're asking for. So that just shows you the kind of money in this. So keep that in mind, people, and all those people out there that want to get into these different businesses. Um, you know, there just ain't corporations. There's lots of money to be made out there in things like this. And he's not the only one making millions from remote viewing. Now, other people have struggled and it's difficult to get, but what business is? Apparently, he stepped down as the president of SciTech, and he was taken over by his, uh, apparently, his ex-wife. Of course, his ex-wife uh, was a Filipino, as most military people can apparently meet people. They have to marry um, people they meet out in very low, depressed economic worlds. Um, 
So he claims that he left uh, the company for ethical reasons, uh, whatever that means. Since when does he have ethics? <laughs> so he did what? And for ethical reasons, he set up another company. So after leaving the older company and whatever they did to his ex-wife, um, who talked about how he is so possessed by aliens, um, he formed another company. Um, which is very typical of people forming different companies. This way, you uh, it's all clean starts. They BS people as well. So, you know, he wears his little uniform everywhere to get more business. And more shenanigans uh, started to happen again. So, um, a former SciTech employee named uh, Bonsal um, uh, apparently burgled... Uh, one of the houses and made off with several boxes of files belonging to SciTech, which he allegedly handed over to Dames. Um, so uh, another lawsuit ensued, and there were problems there as well. Um, so you know, there's but this is business and people again, and you get you can't get any worse pay. A lot of money's involved. You've got military people involved. Um, these conservative, I'm trying to do the right thing attitude are the biggest crooks you can get. You know, the kind of people that put fish on their um, checks and then bounce them all over time um, using that kind of an attitude. Um, so, one thing after another, and I'm not sure what he's up to today, but, you know, he's certainly got plenty and plenty of money. He can go around doing what he's doing. He's still doing his training courses instead of applying it. Um... Uh, to making money directly. Because ultimately, that's yeah, you don't have to do any of that if they claim to be all that empowered. Um, and of course, like everybody in these kind of industries, you're kind of forced to make outrageous claims, and he certainly does. Um, he's got uh, videos, of course, and of course, getting his training costs a few thousand dollars, and I'm sure many thousands, uh, depending on how far you get into the program. You can buy his different videos for anywhere from 25 to several hundred dollars to teach you different remote viewing areas, and I have a few of them myself, and they are well produced, well done, and to the point of teaching you how to do a specific skill for a specific purpose. Even shows you how to use it for. Uh, winning at gambling, etc. And apparently, uh, and, you know, you can't make these things up. Um, he's had uh, two of his students, uh, however that may be. Of course, I'm always a leery when anything is connected to takes, just the Illuminati capital of criminals. Um, that won the... Uh, Pick three, which is not the major uh, lottery, but in Texas. So apparently somebody uh, uh, or his students won that twice. Yes, yeah, so it was the pick three. So I'm assuming that's three numbers, which is much easier. The um, statistical probabilities of winning a pick three over uh, five to seven numbers, depending on the lottery you're involved in, uh, is... Uh, quite better but they were able to do it and apparently twice so what can we say to that we, well it's he's teaching psychic stuff the best um if you teach yourself psychic training not remote viewing training you're going to do a lot better which has been proved when a psychic um was uh, put against a top psychic was put against the top remote viewer uh joseph um, monaco he horribly failed at it, not getting a single thing right, while the psychic got everything right. So what training do you want? It? The expensive military training? You know, the guys from Vietnam and Korean War and on and on, and the Middle East who've never won a war and go their training? Or do you want to go to a psychic who is successful and everything? So think about that, people. Don't let these goofy uniforms and nut jobs uh, uh, convince you that there's something because yeah well I was in the military what does that mean I don't care even if you come from a credible area I'm from MIT well, what does that mean <laughs> uh, it doesn't mean anything to me except that you were able to get in and pass tests does that mean anything past that 
So we don't have to keep that in mind. We have to also keep it in mind. Ed Dames is famous for going on the Art Bell Show, spilling his guts. I mean, he was uh, responsible to a large degree with um, uh, Ed Dames of causing the Heaven's Gate debacle where a whole bunch of people committed suicide. Of course, that was their actual... Uh, goal anyway. I mean, they were building up to that. They were disillusioned with this reality entirely. Well, who isn't? But um, the problem is when you think that some miracles are going to happen uh, in life and you don't understand the process and the game that's going on in this reality, well, of course, you're going to get so disillusioned and so disconnected that um, you're going to be at such a state of depression uh, that you're going to uh, look for an opening. Now, this is where the Heaven's Gate people came in because Ed Dame stated that there were alien crafts behind this um, meteor or that was coming to us. And um, uh, this was taken by Heaven Gate as their ability now to go to this actual alien craft. And to do that, of course, they had to get rid of their physical bodies. Uh, there has been some talk that maybe there was a spaceship there. Who knows? We don't really know with any of that. But to think that Ed Dames would know and that um, Art Bell, Art Bell was a huckster. I don't think he believed anything. He was put up. We know that he was funded by the uh, Illuminati and all those people that control those things, the secret government. So we know that as for 100% true. That's where he was funded by. So, um, and this is not hidden knowledge. It's just that nobody really talks about it except me. So the whole idea is that... Um, uh, so, and it was great show. Oh, everybody loved it. World's coming. I mean, 90% of Art Bell's show is that we're all going to die. And this is what sells. People are intrigued by this. Earth changes. We're falling into the ocean. Earth change maps. This is what's going to happen. And they sold tens of thousands of these and made a fortune. It's intriguing. I bought one of the maps. It's intriguing. I had it posted in my uh, uh, retail store for a long time. So the whole idea is, what, what does all that mean? So it all means that uh, um, these are fascinating. You get caught up into it. Earth changes were big when Art Bell was on there. But Art Bell made Earth changes big. He made Ed Dames and so many other cranks that he put on there. And he put on a whole bunch of weird cranks because it was good entertainment. It was like a freak show to a large extent. And there isn't anybody out there. Certainly, um, all these uh, radio commentary people have no background whatsoever in this area. They haven't studied anything, uh, particularly Art Bell, who was a little bit uh, goofy in the fact that he would put anybody on. He really had no comebacks for anything. I was on Art Bell's show uh, before his big, giant explosion for five hours. Um, uh, but he didn't know anything about the subject matter that I was talking about and got into um, ridiculous discussions, but had absolutely nothing to say. So, um, no background, no studying, no nothing. And that's the fact with the guy who took over his show and who's ever been there. Nobody has any background or studied any of this stuff. They don't know anything. So you're giving publicity to people that uh, don't deserve it and causing a, an indirect panic. And of course, when you put somebody on a radio show, you're giving them indirect credibility. And that's important to understand as well. So you don't have to say you agree with them, but the fact that you're on there says that there. So you have to be careful with that, especially when people make outrageous statements. And Art Bell uh, himself said, hey, this is just entertainment. He covered his ass. Um, so the whole idea is that, um, but he didn't, you know, it, it, there's a problem there. It's a problem that you have to have some background to question people. So what does uh, Ed Dames come out every year and say? The aliens are attacking. They're going to defoliate the planet. We're all going to die. Well, I guess if you keep saying that for a few hundred years, Eddie boy, it'll come true. And this is what a lot of psychics tend to do are these prophecy people. They keep saying the same thing over and over again. And every time you repeat it, statistically, you're closer to that maybe happening. And that's what he said. It never happens. And there's endless amounts of garbage like this coming out of this guy's head. Now, should we take courses from a guy that thinks like this because he learned something out of a bookie? Oh, really? I don't think so. I don't like to be involved with people um, that have ridiculous 
predictions. One of them, he said the Martians are going to steal photo, uh, fertilizer from companies like the Martians. Uh, did anybody look at that planet? Doesn't seem to be any fertilizer there, unless it's underground. Uh, Satan would be proven by science. Bill Clinton would be killed April 1998 uh, on the golf course by lightning. I mean, you know, when you uh, make these predictions, because this is what he saw with his remote viewing. He claimed to know the exact location of Amelia Earhart's plane. Uh, we don't know if that's true, unless somebody went there and dug or whatever. Um, I mean, he's often been called Dr. Doom because he loves and People love, oh, what's going to happen, man? Um, and, of course, he's been predicting year after year this deadly fungus spores will be released by extraterrestrials uh, to destroy Earth. And this was going to happen in 1998. You know, all this was when there were big prophecies were happening towards the year 2000, which uh, when things, uh, certain dates like 2000 and so forth, people come up with all these conspiracy series. He claimed that a uh, Africa would be hit by a famine because of wheat fungus, which uh, this wheat fungus would spread to America. That didn't happen. He said America would be hit with 300 mile an hour winds. That didn't happen. So um, all of this is the type of things that he talks about. And um, he's very uh, connected into the alien agenda, which maybe in his military career he ran into some of this stuff. Um, but he doesn't seem to be well connected and certainly isn't spilling anything about uh, the alien contact, any information. I don't think they, while he may have ran into some of this in his military career, um, these kind of people with mouths like that don't get into these areas or even survive. Uh, so um, he didn't get any of that internal information and has never released anything like that except that the world's coming to an end from aliens which may be filling the agenda that the military community uh, wants Ed Dames to do as well and that's uh, to have panic out there because that's another way to get their credit card charged up you know we got to support the military there there are threats from space and uh, if we can sober them up and stop their raping and losing ways um, maybe they could do something good luck think they're going to do anything with traditional military weapons to begin with. Not that that's all they have. There's a whole group that have uh, superior anti-hostile uh, alien weapons, so Tesla-type weapons. Um, but they're not going to let a guy like Ed Dames know that. I mean, this guy is a joke in the community. Well, if you want something to get out and tell it, but people to laugh at it, give it to Ed Danes. But that's a type of disinformation, like I said. Give real stuff to a guy that nobody listens to. But then they can say, well, you know, we got it out. You know, Ed Danes talked about it. What? You gave it to Ed Danes? The nut job? Yeah, but we, we got the information out. We didn't lie. Now, this is how it works. So, um, uh, And, of course, the traditional way, which is you release stories both things like they did with remote viewing the intelligence community first said this is complete nonsense it's all garbage then 10 years later they made a official report written by the cia stating that remote viewing did have good results in certain areas at a certain percentage i believe they said that five percent was astonishing so uh here we go here well it's not it's good it's kind of good we don't know this is how information has gotten out to the public and you need to be very aware of it so old Dr. Doom is at it again and continues to be going. And I'm sure his classes are still full. He's still selling lots of DVDs, training in this system. And uh, like all of it, I mean, I don't believe in any of this training and all the books out there that they're training you that are CIA written and empowered and all of their people are out monitoring everybody to find out who has, I mean, Joseph McConaughey has now taken over the Monroe Institute who started all this with astral projection so now he's in there the spook is in there watching for anybody who's talented working and running there uh, and of course you've got all these other guys teaching these very inferior systems out there but they don't care they don't want to teach you the best they're just looking for talented people who excel at the most junkiest systems they can get it's kind of a way of screening people then they scoop you up in their in the american flag telling you to help your country and use and abuse you for their own personal profits which is what the military does like all the other 
uh, institutions. The police are not there to assist you. They're filling their pockets. They're a gang. The military is a gang. Your so-called political representatives are a gang. The medical industry is a gang. And they're all controlled by different people for their own self-empowerment. So what you're going to get from Ed Dames, well, I mean, there's so much wacky, goofy stuff coming from him. I would never uh, spend any kind of money uh, on his courses. But, you know, you get all the information you can. As a uh, manifesting scientist and a serious researcher for over 50 years now, I get and read everything. Do I go and follow courses and spend thousands and get involved in things that will take years to learn and then you find out when you come to the end of it it's bogus like Scientology? No, that's a waste of time. you got to understand and work from gnosis, which means don't get involved in things that you're going to spend lots and lots of money on and spend years in that have hardly any proven um, validity behind them. But should you know about what they're doing? Can you get information to figure out if there's anything there? Yes, and you should be doing that. So buying a DVD for 20 or 50 bucks, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, reading books in Scientology, well, there's some good things there as well. But if you go in there and allow them to milk you of every penny you have, and then when you come to the very end of it, there's nothing there. There are no empowered people in Scientology. Uh, it was a great alternative to Christianity for a while for those uh, pseudo-intellectual white uh, people who were seeking something other than uh, Eastern mysticism and traditional religions. So they scooped up a lot of people and they were an organization that was out there and in your face and connected in Hollywood, etc. But when you really get down to it, what have any of them ever done? Even the big shot Tom Cruise can't even keep a wife. Well, that's certainly shows that he can't make the right decisions, he can't control people or at least get them to buy into his philosophy. No, they all married him to 10 years to get into his uh, pockets and they're gone. Well, same old story. And why isn't he marrying Scientologists to begin with? Uh, like most of these people, their religion ends at their waist. So the whole idea is that uh, this is very um, important to understand. So how do we look at Ed Dames? Well, uh, he's another military crank. He was a big mouth. Art Bell made him very wealthy. Um, he continues to run companies and do other things. What they're doing and how much money they're making, we don't know because nobody will admit using his companies and he will not state it as well. There's no reason to do that. People don't want to say, well, I used company money to pay this psychic. Um, whether it is successful or not. What his success rate is, what he does, well, again, uh, unless he's making lots of money personally, making money teaching and working for others is not really much proof of any kind of empowerment. So you have to do it yourself. And right now, nobody has come out with any kind of sizable pots of gold that they claim they did. I picked the stock. Why does it? Ed Dames pick the stock market and say, look what I've done. Don't you think you get a lot more customers? Nobody has done this in this industry. And even the one person who is doing this and stating it outright has never claimed to make any great money. They claim they're doing okay. Well, what does that mean? They were supposed to start this organization, Marty Rosenblatt, um, another remote viewer that comes from a contractual military background, meaning he was a, uh, a scientist of sorts working for the government under the uh, Secrecy Act as well. So, But he says, well, I'm doing this uh, because it's fun. I enjoy it, but I'm trying to prove this stuff is important. Now, 15 years later, he's not announcing any great wins. So what is going on here? Well, it's all shrouded in mystery. And all of these companies are all ultimately, uh, and people involved with them. If you're tied to the government, you have signed a lifetime contract not to talk. You can't tell things. You can't do things. So you can't, you're not going to do it. So they're on an agenda. And I'm not sure it's even a hidden agenda, but it's not exactly at the top. But they have an agenda to get this information out there to create an industry that the military doesn't have to then... Um, 
finance themselves to find talented people to train everybody and here are their trainers and everybody in these programs including the guy who threw out the trash cleaned the floors has written a book on remote viewing why there certainly isn't books written by everybody else in the military and there certainly are things there that could be discussed why not so the point is this whole area and then everybody in these different programs has written about it one way or another to make money off of it. Well, this is all sanctioned by the uh, military industrial complex, by the intelligent agencies. They want this information out or they wouldn't let you do it. And of course, they only let you release a certain amount, just like with Yuri Geller. They wouldn't let the films of him uh, being doing his amazing feats to be given to the public until a certain amount of years later. And it's so much later. You're talking about the films have just been released recently that were made 20 and 30 years ago. Well, nobody cares anymore. So, and that's the whole idea of it. The whole idea of it is to release stuff that nobody really cares about anymore because it's so old. I mean, Yuri Geller is old hat and they've discredited him, so who cares? Again, they created what they want to around that particular person, which is questions and uh, discrediting him. So no matter what he does, everybody says, yeah, it's just a magic trick. You know, the guy who didn't graduate high school, who's been arrested and, and has questionable sex background, yeah, he said that he's a freak. I mean, that's what you're getting out there. So it's very important that everybody understands that. And uh, here's another one. I wouldn't, as I said, you gather all the information you can at a reasonable price. But to go to people like him and all the other remote viewers, well, there's so much online for free that unless you're going to get a book and a course from an outsider who's taken all these practices to a next level, similar to Success Tech or someone else that's not directly connected to them, you're not really getting any great information. It's all the same stuff. The manual has been written by the CIA. It's available everywhere. It's free. You paid for it. Don't you understand that? Well, you can't get into military bases and you can't buy at the PX if you're a foreign American citizen. They keep you out of it while they let the local criminals in. But you paid for this and it's out there and you can access it free of charge, uh, the CIA remote viewing mat. That's all you really need and then fill that in. That's what they know. Do you pay hundreds and thousands of dollars to these other people to teach you? Um, I've always found ridiculous, but everybody needs their hand held to do a lot of stuff. So they figure that taking courses, especially those people that have this kind of money, and there are many that do, uh, prefer to have a live teacher to talk to. So um, I don't recommend any of this. All the remote viewing documents that have been declassified are online. Every single one of them. From what I understand, there's tens of thousands of these documents uh, out there, of pages of these documents. So it's all out there. Don't get caught up. Ed Dames has no credibility whatsoever. I don't know what he's done, but he was not trained as a remote viewer. He's trained as a teacher and a monitor, which does have its value if you are a teacher. Um, but what he's been done, what he's been able to do with other things is the usual case. He's a typical low-level military guy involved with strange, unqualified people and not a good businessman. After all, how would he know how to run business? And as usual, with all the military, police and doctors, etc., they have no morality. They'll screw you over in a second. Until next time.